Good morning. Welcome to the morning chat and happy Friday. We made it. We made it. Yes, we did. We did make it this morning. Oh, I hope you all had a restful night's sleep. Now, let me do an official. <laughs> oh, intro. Welcome to the morning chat. Well, I tell you what's on my mind in the morning time. I hope you had a wish, a restful, restful sleep last night. Welcome IG, who has been watching the behind the scenes as I kind of set up and put on my purple lipstick today. If you don't notice, I do have on purple and it don't match nothing I got on. Not a daggone thing. Not a daggone thing. I just felt like it's Friday. Put on a dark lip this morning. Mm-hmm. I sure did. I sure did. Uh, I did. I had a really good rest um, again this tonight. I mean, last night. Um, I had a really good rest. Like, I woke up at 5 before my alarm went off. Um... I was still laying in the bed. It, it was it was good. I, I, I have to learn to not do such long pauses because I'd be like, I never thought I'd be a celebrity. <laughs> oh, let me just stop playing. I want to, first of all, thank you all. Everyone that watches this show on YouTube and IG and those who tune in on Facebook when I do the morning rise, any show that you watch, I want to let you know I'm so appreciative of you all. And God's willing, as I go along, I can show my appreciation by, one, giving you better content, two, by giving y'all, giving away some things, especially in the holidays, as the holidays are coming. So, I mean, I don't have that plan, but I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there, that I'll be at a point where I can help those in need without hurting and put myself in need you know what i'm saying so i just wanted to thank you all for just watching me subscribing those who follow and subscribe and watch my reels my shorts my videos my lives thank you um last but not least oh well for the morning intro, morning announcement. Last week's Friday is available. I mean, morning chat is available on YouTube. I suggest you watch it. I watch my own content, y'all. I do. I'm going to take these glasses off because I'm just tired of the glare and I'm not reading anything right now. Um, Watch. Go watch the videos, man. Sometimes I, I'm I'm giving game. Sometimes I'm just straight entertaining. I be making myself laugh. I do. I watch my own content and I be making me laugh. You know what I'm saying? So I'm funny, B. I mean, like, I'm not saying I'm going to go into stand-up comedy. But I'm funny. I'm entertaining, y'all. Okay? Um, and that is while I'm working for the man. You know what I'm saying? I'm working for the man. I wanted to imagine how entertaining that could be when I am when I have more time to develop content. Okay. Oh. Ah. <laughs> uh, this morning, it's not as cold as it was. Uh, on when Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it was. I really don't need to have this hoodie on, but I want to represent from where I'm from. DC, stand up! Ah, now some of y'all who are raised and born and raised in the and in DC, okay, it's like bitch, you ain't from DC. I am. I was born at Washington Hospital Center. My first baby years was in Southeast D.C. Well, right across the street. I was in Southview. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, in uh, uh, it's not Capitol Heights. What is that? Um, Forestville, right across the street in Southview. That's that's what my mama told me. You know that until we moved to Temple Hills, top of the hills had a house up there. Okay. Um, don't get mad at me that my mom chose the right man twice. Two good men that put her in a house and gave her the suburban life. Hello. Mm. But I was born in D.C., raised in PG, and went and lived in Southeast D.C. later on in my life. So don't tell me I ain't from D.C. Okay? <laughs> I didn't live in the hood. I lived a good life, and not everybody from D.C. Nay, Rob, she wasn't. She wasn't raised in the hood either. She's suburban too. She had a good life. Her mom and her parents provided for her well too. Okay, not all of D.C. is hood. Okay, uptown. Okay, I, I unfortunately, I'm more. I, I lived in Southeast. I lived in the not so suburban areas. Of South DCC. Now there are also suburban areas. Well, not I mean because that's in the district, so. Um, but it was a nicer area of Southeast, and yes, yes, Southeast has nice areas. Okay, Fairfax Village stand up. Now you still could get robbed over there, but Fairfax Village stand up. That's right across the street from Maryland. From PG, bitch. Branch Avenue. Alabama Avenue. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let me stop repping for... Nah, I'll never stop repping for my city that I'm from. But I am just as much an uh, uh, AT alien to, you know. Um, my, my biological father lived here in Atlanta metropolitan area. For since the 80s. So Atlanta is a second home for me. I remember going to Six Flags as a kid um, when I came down here to visit my father in the summertime. I remember going down to the underground and hanging out there with my cousin who came up from Florida. You know what I'm saying? I remember, but again, I'm suburban. I ain't from Bankhead. My father lived in Marietta, East Cobb. That's right. Okay, I can't help it. I mean, it's in my blood to to live okay. You know what I'm saying? It's in my blood. Don't take my color of my skin and think, oh, she must be from the hood child. No, I am so suburban. I know at at one time when it used to be, uh, it used to be hip. Oh, no, that, I sounded like my mother right there. But it used to be the culture, the black culture, the hip-hop culture was gangster and thug. And I tried. I tried. I did. And if I, you know, I'm pretty sure if I was a fly on the wall in the 90s when I was down here going to school, me sitting up there trying to act gangster, I would be cracking up a car. You was I am far from a gangster. I don't need to. I don't tote guns. You know what I'm saying? We ain't from the hood. Even I love my son. I mean, you know. But I mean, my son was in the hood. But you know, I'm pretty sure there was some things that he been through. But nigga, you been gangster, nigga. I mean, I know we had times where we struggled, but gang. Bitch. As a friend of mine says, uh, my friend CJ says about my son Nathan. <laughs> Nathan was raised in the mean streets of Sandy Springs. <laughs> Come on now, and anybody from the metropolitan area know it, it ain't that mean. Now the streets is always the streets is always mean. Okay, streets. I don't care where you are. If you're on the streets, literally, it's hard. But 
it's a little less hard in certain areas. Okay. Now again, we struggle now. There was times when we struggled, but you know, I mean, struggle for us. Just like I grew up, there was times when we struggled, you know. But we always had. We never seen government cheese. I mean, like my parents didn't get government cheese. They had five kids with one income. Okay, because my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Now, mind you, she would do her um, business projects that she do, like home interiors and Mary Kay and Tupperware, and she always find other ways to bring in money. My mom was very entrepreneurial, okay? She even found a way to make money from her writing. That's how I know. I... I I have never tapped into my writing skills um, because my mom was a writer. She Later on in life, she began to write poetry. She even had a song that was published, that was sing, sung in her Church of Christ. I don't remember the name of the song or how it went, to be honest with you, because that was once I then got down here and went to Freak Nick, and I was, I was an adult. You know, when she did all this. But I do know it happened. You know what I'm saying? She was in um, authors, clubs, and, you know, stuff like that. You know, my mom was a writer. So it's in my blood to write. And one day, very soon, you're going to find out just how creative this mind is. Okay, okay, y'all gonna find out there's gonna be a book, and I ain't gonna have no um author, you know, like I'm not gonna have a different name. I'm gonna go buy a car, just a car, no last name, a car. That's enough. You better recognize maybe Cara Monique, but. Not the full day. But anyway, yeah, okay. So I'm really all over the place today. But um moving on, let's get to the main topic because at this point I am halfway into my conversation with you. And I need to be up off of here um in about 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. So um that it's Friday, just got paid. Friday night, pay my rent, because it is due. <laughs> okay. So I ain't going to be having a whole bunch of fun this weekend. Nope. Nope. Like the movie. Nope. Nope. That is such a black movie. I'm sorry. I'm going to move into that subject. That is such a black name of a movie, of a scary movie made by a black person. Let's see. Ah, I can't think of the guy's name. Key, Peel. He was part of the Key and Peel, but he's Peel. I don't know. You know who I'm talking about. No. That's such a, that exactly. If there was a ghost that manifested in my background right now, nope. And I'm out the door. Okay? We don't investigate. We run. We get the hell out of Dodge. Okay, some of us. Then there's someone who's investigate. But let's get into a, something that was on what was on my mind in this morning time. You know what was on my mind is I have a question. Do you all think that intelligence equals money? Well, let me let me make it more. It's um, narrow that more down because intelligence can mean anything. You can be emotionally intelligent. You can be street intelligent. You can be um, book intelligent. Education. Knowledge equals wealth. And do you think that talent equals fame? 
I'm going to tell you what I think. Nope. Once again, referencing um, referencing the 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 uh, movie. No, nope. I ain't never gonna see that movie either because I don't like scary movies. But no, it doesn't. I realized I was thinking today. You know what? Most of the wealthy people in the Bible weren't wealthy because they were so smart. Matter of fact, most of them are dumb. Most of them were criminals. Most of them didn't have any type of of uh, accolades that made them wealthy. It reminds me of the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I have never finished, but I did begin to start to read and I watched different shows where it's basically uh, the guy who wrote the book. And no, I don't have it and I'm not going to look it up. Okay. Take that, take that, take that. Okay. Was basically comparing his poor dad who was educated, a professor, like he had like his PhD and he was struggling to his rich dad who was wealthy and just happened to make right financial decisions, okay? One was educated, one was didn't have all the degrees, you know what I'm saying, behind his name and he was struggling. I think about Abraham. Was Abraham smart? Was Abraham smart? No. Abraham just did what the Holy Spirit told him to do. He said, leave my house. I packed up my family and I left my house, my, my father's house. You do know he was 40 years old when he did that. I, think, I believe Abraham was 40 when he left his family father's house okay so those of you that still i will never again look down upon those adult people who live with their parents abraham was 40 when he left his father's house and god called him away from his father so that he could take him in a direction where he need to be Okay. So yes, how you doing, Raz Pre Dean Music? How you doing? Okay. You want me to sing something? You into the music business? No. <laughs> anyway, um, Abraham was forty when he left his mom's parents' house and ventured out on his own on the unction of the Holy Spirit or a voice. You know what I'm saying? And he got rich pipping his wife out. You know what I'm saying? He got rich pipping his wife out. What? Abraham pipped his wife out? Yes. Yes. Well, I, he didn't literally offer his wife up to the king, but he knew he, got a, he had a baddie. Okay? So when they went into the town, when they was going to rent, you know, he said, look, look, wifey, I know you is a fine mother, mamma jamma, okay? Let me tell, show my age, you a fine mamma jamma. You are a brick house, okay? So when we go into that town, tell them you my sister. I mean, technically you are. You, you a sister from another mother, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Or you a, you know, from another father, whatever. How would that work? But... Tell them you my sister. Don't tell them you my wife because they'll kill me to get you. Hey, thank you. You like my purple lipstick? Mwah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he built out his wife. And he told her to tell them that so, so that he wouldn't get killed. He not did it once, but he did it twice. And only the only reason he got some of his riches that he left he the, the king said, get, a, get out of my kingdom. God had to come to the king and said, don't you sleep with that woman. That is his wife. He lied to you. Yeah, he did. But if you leave her alone, send her on her way, the, the dude that lied to you, he's going to pray for you and I'm going to have favor on you. 
Okay, one of the times that's what he did. The other, other time, both of the kids that had him because that was his sister. So in exchange for his sister, they gave him maid servants, cattle, all this stuff. It's like exchange for your sister, diary for your sister, so I can have your sister to myself. Uh huh. Is he 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 made it rain on Abram because this is before he had the ham at the end. Okay, Abram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And so when he found out that that was his wife, oh, I can't touch this bitch. <laughs> okay. Let him go. Uh, so he said, let him go. He said, take all the stuff. I don't want none of that stuff back. I don't want none of it. Take the cattle, take the service, take the money, take the gold. Just get out. Okay. That's how he got rich. That's, that's how he got rich. Okay. First of all, church, can I speak to the church for a minute? Stop this and these drug dealers and strippers and all that stuff. Some of the, your, the, the, some of your famous, the ones that you follow, those men of God that you read about in the Bible were just as bad. Matter of fact, all of them were. You understand? I, I'm just saying. Solomon and all his glory. Mm. Guess what? He got his money because of his daddy. He was inherited. Okay? That's how he got his money. Okay? He was blessed with wisdom. But he got his money because he was the son of David. You know, same thing with Trump. You think Trump is super financially Clever? No. This is that. And a lot of people that are rich are rich because they're ruthless enough to make some of the shrewdest decisions and not have their emotions in their decisions. Okay. What's love got to do with your financial situation? You know what I'm saying? Same thing with the one with talent. The one with talent. Oftentimes, it's not the most famous. And it's, I, 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 I don't want you to, I don't want the beehive coming after me. But Beyonce isn't the most talented. She's just the most supportive. Okay? I venture to say that Kelly Rowland sings better than Beyonce. But the one that was supported in that group from the beginning that was intended to be a solo artist was Beyonce. Her father supported her. Okay. He pushed her. Okay. As he should, because that was her father. I mean, like, duh. You know what I'm saying? She's not the most talented. Now, I'm not taking away from her hard work. I'm not taking away from her uh, her hard work in any I respect child the stuff that she does to put give us to entertain us when she gets out on that stage. Okay, I have never been to a Beyonce concert and I don't think I would ever pay any amount of money to see Beyonce. You know, in the prime in her prime right now. But B, I know she she does, she works hard. Like, especially after when she did Coachella. And she just had them twins. And I think she did the documentary. I did see the documentary on Netflix. That girl worked hard after having twins. Bitch, you lucky if I give you, tw I mean, I do anything. You lucky if I come to work after having twins. Hmm. Uh, uh. Hmm. You want me to come back in six weeks? You make that 12. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. But the most talented, there's a lot of people that will sing circles around um, Beyonce. And they're not as popular because she's the one that's pushed. She's what she 
She has the it factor. Okay. Period. And some will say, oh, because she's light skinned. That probably contributed to it. It did. I mean, but that's a part of the it factor. You know, because that there are some dark skinned women that has made it. It's none recent day, but that I can think of who who made it up to the Beyonce status that's dark skinned, that's a woman that sings R and B or pop or anything. No worry, I'll wait. So yeah, that is a factor in her winning, but there have to be certain things. She has to have be sellable, you know. The and the sellable person isn't always the one with the talent. They can add auto tone. They can teach her to uh, lip sync to the to the to the audio recording. You know what I'm saying? Um, they could teach her to do that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's one thing I realized that it's not the smartest ones. It's just it's preparation meets opportunity. Stay prepared. Stay doing what you're doing. Like a lot of these influencers have been doing this for years. Has been on YouTube and Facebook for years. And then the pandemic, which was opportunity, that equaled opportunity for those people to make money. And they prospered in that time when everybody was home, everybody's locked in that. And we were getting PPP loans and and, um, uh, uh, what they call stimulus checks. They had nothing but time and money to give to these influencers. Time and money. So yes, they met, they had to come up like nobody's freaking business because they stayed at it during. They stayed at it and they continued doing. It. And now they're up here. Now they realize, oh, YouTubers, they making money. TV isn't the way. If you can get your stuff to be popular on social media in any in, in its many forms, you can get paid at doing it. People are paying attention more attention to the influencers on social media than they are to a television show. It is better to 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 have an ad on a popular influencer's channel than to have it on a TV show right now. Now, I'm saying that out of, you know, with no proof of it, but that's what I believe. You know, there was a shift. This is where the money's at, okay? For people to talk about their opinions, that having, having loosened journalistic integrity. Because I'm not a journalist. I'm, I'm saying I'm not a journalist. I am an influencer. I'm telling you what I feel. And I have a right to feel it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that's pretty much how I feel. You don't have to be smart to, to be rich. You just have to stay at what you're doing. You have to stay prepared and, and wait for that opportunity. Every man experiences a good day. If you stay at it, you keep living. Keep on living. If you're thinking about, you know, taking your life, let's be, um, let's change to something a little more serious. Don't do that. Keep living. Keep living. If you're listening to me later, now, this is meant for you to hear right now. Keep living. Don't do it. Don't do it. I know it seems horrible right now. And you don't want, you just want to just end it all right now. You might want to end it all. But keep on living. Things change. I promise you. I promise you. You'll come out of it.
And may my voice speak over the voices that are telling you, go ahead, take your life. Keep living. Don't listen to them. Keep living. Just keep on living. Just keep living. Just keep living. And just take one step, even if it's a little baby step forward. And then the next day, take another baby step forward. Okay? I'm telling you what I know. I, I, this is not an opinion. I'm telling you what I know. 50 years have taught me so far. Keep living. Keep on living. Keep living. Things will change. You'll come out of it and you can use this experience to help to be like me telling you keep living. Just keep on. Keep on. Just keep on living. You lost everything. Just keep on living. You'll get it all back. You know what I'm saying? And some. So just keep on living, y'all. Okay? And get out of your head. Knowledge, you know, my people do what said they, they, um, my people are lost to, to the lack of knowledge. People, I forgot the saying. My people are something because of lack of knowledge. Now, I'm not saying don't learn, okay? Learning to me, knowledge to me, intellect to me is fluid. Because what do you call it? What is intellect? It's just knowing stuff, okay? It's just knowing. It's just knowing stuff, okay? Knowing, okay? Then you get the knowledge, but now... You need to be asking for wisdom. Now ask for wisdom on how to use that knowledge in the right time. Okay? So, that's all I really have for you. I got to get on into this job and make these dollars. Okay? So that I can continue making, paying my rent. Okay? Now, when y'all start paying me rent, paying my rent, okay, I can stay on here longer, okay, and get more in depth with what's on my mind in the morning time. But now, the man, it's like I owe him some time. I got him one more day, and then tomorrow, back at it. Thank you for coming back, Raph, okay? Um, But... Unfortunately, I'm about to go now. So, <laughs> um, you all have a wonderful day. Yeah, I scooched a little closer because I'm about to cut off. I'm like, oh. Doop. <laughs> Doop. anyway, um, you all have a wonderful Friday, and remember, love yourself, love your neighbors, and stay authentic. Okay. And remember, you don't have to be smart. You just have to keep at it. All right? Bye.